This is something a little bit different this week. This is a grumble about Google Play Movies. All right, I wanted to take a quick look at Google Play Movies on Android. I really feel that this software, this app, this service is falling behind everything else out there. Now, from the most part, uh, whenever you access it through Google Play, you see that it is actually a, a pretty decent looking service. When you tap on things, you get your top movie deals, you get to see that these movies are $7.99 reduced to $5.99, and there's a, a good amount of them there for you to uh, to choose from. So say we were to take something like Lara Croft, which is reduced from $7.99 down to $5.99. We tap on it, we get a trailer, we get the, the cover art, we get a bit of information about it, and we see that its SD list price is $7.99, that's been reduced down to $4.99. The HD version is $5.99. So it's, it could possibly give you a bit more of a, a clue as to what things are costing uh, right from the word go. $7.99 down to $5.99, which I guess is technically true, but they're quoting the SD price of $7.99 down to $5.99 for the HD price, but it's actually down to $4.99 for the SD price. So it's almost like they're not really quite paying attention to what they're quoting you. If you were to go to something else like Stallone's Cobra, for example, $9.99 down to $3.99. There's no SD version, it's only HD, and then the rental is $3.49. Pretty in Pink is another example. I had a look at it earlier. Seven, uh, SD price is $7.99. Buy from $4.99 or rent from $2.49. So you have to actually tap that to bring up the options that you have. SD is $4.99, HD is $5.99. You know, there's a, a massive amount of space on the screen that could show you a better pricing breakdown, but they don't bother to do that. So, in, in a full experience, the Google Play Store version of Google Play Movies isn't too bad. Uh, you get to see all of these different options that they have not so much in the way of deals or anything but uh, you can flick across and see what things cost uh, this tv show called avatar the last airbender was 40 pounds is now down to 20 pounds and 99p for uh, the complete series whereas you go to season one it's 19.99 down to 10.99 or you can buy individual episodes so very handy, quite nicely laid out. Now we go across to Google Play Movies, the app. And this is, I'm hoping, sort of designed more for using with Android TV or, or streaming hardware in general. Uh, we have essentially the same movies being, being displayed here. However, there's a distinct lack of usability on this front page. We've got the new release highlights. We go down to that section of top movie deals. We've got from there our airplane mode. You have to scroll all the way across in order to see everything that is for sale here. You can't tap on an arrow here and have a nice big list of everything. You have to stay on this one page and scroll through them. So if we were to go into one and have a quick look at the pricing, it's the same kind of way where it's the list price of $7.99 down to $4.99. If we were to take the example that we looked at earlier, it wasn't that one, it was the other Tomb Raider, wasn't it? Discount available, buy from $4.99. Doesn't give you too much in the way of information. You tap on that and it does give you the information. $7.99 down to $5.99, $7.99 down to $4.99. So it's, it's constantly withholding information from you to let you know whether or not you're getting a good deal or not. Well, I feel. So once you've bought your uh, movie or TV show, you go into your library, and these are the movies that I do in fact own, and you can see, uh, say, Once Upon a Time in America, you get the trailer, which I think most films come with the trailer, 
and then you just have the movie. There's there's no extras on it, uh, even on Amazon Prime. Uh, you can flip up or press the up button and get background information into the into the film. But Google merely offer the film. That's it. You can add it to your family library so that everyone in your family can see it. That's kind of a nice feature, I suppose, uh, because they could pull the movie off the shelf and watch it for themselves. You can download it to your tablet or your your phone or whatever you happen to be using and it gives you if you like that you may as well go with these so it can sell you more things while you're looking at your collection but the big feeling comes whenever you go into tv shows now i've been watching through futurama i i'm i think i'm on season six now i'm about to move into season six but if i was to hit home i would have no indication as to what I have been watching. Now on Android TV, it does come up. My NVIDIA Shield shows uh, Resume, which I believe is more to do with the NVIDIA Shield than it is to do with Google Play Movies. But here we have the front screen and you have no indication as to what you were watching last. I go into the library and again, no indication as to what you were watching last. So I want to go and resume watching I think it was the last episode of season five I was about to start. So go to Futurama. There's all my episodes there. I think I'm in season five. So I click that and I'll go down to see the, to the, to the last episode. And it shows that it's 1.99. But I bought the entire of Futurama in a sale quite recently. So I would. I have to pay £1.99 to watch it. No, in fact, what I have to do is go to select the season and go to the box set, which is the complete season, 1 to 10, and then go and find season 5. Here, that's the last one we downloaded. It wouldn't show me that anywhere. There's no shortcuts to that that I can locate. And then I've downloaded season 6 as well and some of season 7 to prepare myself for the week ahead so I can watch them on the go. Now, having finished watching season five, episode 15, I had to uncheck the episode to remove it. It doesn't do that automatically, whereas it, it does do with Netflix and something like Plex or one of those kinds of things. Uh, and you would have to go and check the next one in order to download it, to add it to the collection so you actively have to be mindful of where you are it you do get a bit of a hint here where the thumbnail is and it shows you a white bar as to how much you've watched but look at the amount of wasted space on this screen you have a small thumbnail on the left you have basic information for season 5 episode 16 with a plot outline for that episode and on the right hand side we have a tick and an I own this in my family library function. That's it. That's all you know. So you have to do most of the legwork if you go and purchase a TV show off of Google Play. And it's a real feeling. So what would make sense is that, well, that was a nice animation there, they'd obviously put some effort into that. You have your casting and you have your options up here and your search and things, but you have a watch list. So you go into that and that's the movies that you've added to your watch list to check and see if they're well to keep, to keep an idea of what you are looking for next. Now my watch list is a wee bit uh, random, uh, but it's quite densely populated, so it's difficult to find. And right here, we'll stop on A Quiet Place. This has been on my watch list for, oh, I don't know, about a year since it came out. I have it on Blu-ray, but I haven't bought the digital copy um, because I have it on Blu-ray. I haven't had a need to. It's been on sale that entire time, reduced from $7.99 down to $5.99, and I believe it went to $4.99 over Christmas. But I have yet to receive a notification about these movements. I've just happened to notice it because I look in here quite frequently because the watch list allows me to keep an, keep a track of movies that I would like to own digitally. And add to my collection whenever they're on sale. 
you're supposed to get a notification and I have done through an older tablet that I have that Google Play Movies is installed on. Whenever I turn it on, I'll get a whole host of notifications to say this particular thing is on sale and I believe that's because it's running an older version of Android. If I tap on A Quiet Place, you can see it's reduced in price from $7.99 to $5.99. I don't believe that list price of $7.99 should be there anymore because it hasn't been that price for a long time. But as you go down here, you see these prices where you've got Real Genius is $2.49. If I tap on that, it's $2.49 to rent or purchase for $7.99. There's no indication as to what that $2.49 is right now. So it all becomes a bit hodgepodge. We have a lot of space here that, that can be filled in with useful information for the customer so that they know what they're getting. $249 for best seller is the rental price. $7.99 for Snake Eyes is the purchase price. Now obviously I know that some things aren't available to rent and are only available to purchase. Um, it works the other way as well but it could quite easily put that by HD 799 in this big lump of gray space to the right of the title. Then they can update that with the likes of what they've done with mum and dad there uh, to show 799 down to 599. So I guess my main gripe about Google Play Movies is how they display your content after you purchase it. And I feel it's the same with so many other online markets as well. Sony, for example, with their PlayStation, it's hard work to go and find things that you've already purchased because they seem to be more interested in selling you more stuff as opposed to delivering you the content that you have purchased. Mm -hmm. It is nice that you can click on downloaded and then click on Futurama, but it would be nice if that was to actually show the things that you had downloaded, whereas here it just gives you a full list and the likely place that you're going to go to be able to limit it down doesn't limit it down so you have to do all the scrolling in the world in order to go and find it futurama is a fairly long series it's got uh, 10 seasons in total so having to scroll all the way down to the bottom is a mild inconvenience especially if you're just quickly sitting down to watch a 20 minute episode you still have to spend a couple of minutes in order to find out where you were last and then it would be nice to be able to have those little extras that you would get on dvd and Blu-ray, but that's a whole other argument altogether. So let me know what your thoughts are on the Google Play Store. Hit that subscribe button and give us a wee thumbs up if you fancy. Turn on those notifications and remember to tune in to Talk Sport on a Wednesday morning at half past midnight for all the latest crazy gadget goings on. And other than that, take care.